the problem. There is no difference between a Muslim and a Christian. It's only that a Christian believes that Jesus is the son of God. So God doesn't need a son. No, but like God does not need a son, As I've explained to you previously, there are, there are more different things. Not just the nature of Jesus, but the historical everything events else, concerning his else. life. I can say, I read the Bible and it says Jesus died. And you guys can say, we can read the Quran and it says Jesus didn't die. You cannot trust either side's account of the event as historical unbiased evidence. You can't. If we can find out which um, which ideology has the okay. correct belief, I know what you're saying. Historical evidence, I know what you're we saying. can therefore conclude the first that that question. ideology has the facts about the nature of said person. That suits what their mind is thinking. Yes. Do you understand what I'm saying? Oh, I'm saying that this is a problem. That's in Christianity the Bible that and in Islam. I agree with that. So I agree with what you're saying. Yeah. Yeah. You, don't really know. you don't really know. The only difference is you believe that Jesus is the Son of God. Yeah. And we believe that Jesus is the Son of God. The only argument is whether he was a prophet or whether he was a son. No, but the, the argument goes if deeper. We could get that, well, you tell me why it goes deeper. So, for example, we don't just believe um, about in a difference about concerning the nature of God, right? Oh, sorry, we don't just believe our difference of belief doesn't just um, what do you call it uh, diverge at the nature of Jesus, right? It actually diverges at the historical events concerning Jesus' life, his death, for example, right? Now that's the point where we diverge as well. Before we even get onto the nature of Jesus, we first have to to establish who is correct on the historical um, on the uh, historical evidence of Jesus and his life, what happened in his life, the events that occurred. One of these being his death. Now we as Christians believe that Jesus did die on the cross, right? We believe that. Now Muslims, as far as I'm concerned, as far as I know, the majority believe that he did not die. I have spoken to one or two Muslims here that actually have a few questions about that, but that's another matter. We'll go with the majority believe it. So that's the point of divergence before we even get to the nature of Jesus. Now, if one evaluates the historical evidence concerning the events of Jesus' life, one has to admit that the overwhelming histori the, the historical evidence. evidence overwhelmingly points towards him dying. There's no two ways about that. The nearest source we have to the, the nearest idea we have of Jesus not dying in, in terms of any historical source is attributed to Muhammad, which is over 600 years later in a different location with a man who didn't even speak the same language. But can I ask you one question? And it might be outside the subject or inside the subject. We told me. Yeah, yeah, we talked about a lot of that. Do you believe that the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, his name was in your Bible? Uh, his name was in our Bible. He, his name wasn't in your Bible? No. It wasn't? No. But uh, when you say the Bible, do you mean what the Bible we have today? Or what you uh, okay, no. Or what Muslims the Bible that you have today, lost in Jew? The Bible that you have today, I believe, is corrupted. Right. But the original text. The original text. Well, see, this is another point of divergence between our two religions, right? We believe that the Bible we have today has not been corrupted, and as we cannot find Muhammad's name in it anywhere. In the original text? No, listen. Oh, but, but in the original text. Wait, wait, wait. Hold on. We believe that the Bible as we have it today is the exact same, identical, and therefore co equal to, going back to the beginning of the debate, co equal to the original text. How can the original Bible be the same as the, the new text? How can the original Bible that you're talking about and the new testament? You just said that they're the same. What do you mean? Oh, you said that they're, they're identical, that they're similar. Okay, it's yes, not a so. testament. It's not a great testament. So of what? Never the day, as a Muslim, I do believe in a lot of the uh, Of course, yes. I believe in the Christian. Now, as a Christian, if I was a Christian, I would actually reflect to the Muslims that we actually believe in somewhat the Bible says. Because there is truth in the Bible. I wouldn't be able to meet halfway and understand that what we're saying could be possible, could be a possibility. the Bible has Now over time it can be wrong. And there's truth of that. Now look, we're not out here to say, oh you're wrong, you're right, you're following the wrong. We're out here to find the truth because there's a reason why we want but, but, but you to find the truth. Hold on, hold on. There's a reason why we want you to find the truth. It's not because we're like we're we are not here wasting our time, wasting our day to speak to a brother like you 
to make you think that you're wrong. Yeah, sure. If you can't come out from where I'm from, no, where I live in, so I'll come here to debate with you for you to understand where we're coming from. Maybe, maybe I can learn or you can learn where there's a the truth in it. We're saying it's what we believe. Yeah. I see what you're saying, but you have to acknowledge as well that everyone here thinks that they already have the truth. Everyone thinks they're right. right? <laughs> but, but in Islam, you have different denominations and different sects where everybody thinks they're right and everyone thinks that they're practicing in the way that they're talking about. But then even we have our truth. We're coming out of that concern outside Christian, Jew, Hindu, wherever you are. Yeah? In the matter, you're a human being. Having a discussion for you to get that level. Forget about the debates we're having within our community. We're talking about outside. Now, Christian and Islam have said from the beginning of the same. No different. The only difference they're, they're is very believing different, in that. No. The only believing in that I can get to God in one second, but it will take you five seconds. Do you understand? You've got to get through Jesus. You don't have to get through Jesus. No, no. We don't you're, have to get through Jesus. You're incorrect there. Go direct. No. Like you can't go out into it. We go direct to God. Right. We don't have to ask anyone to save our sins or die for our sins or whatever. Because let me tell you something. Can I clear up a misconception? Oh. So, for example, what, what you're referring to us going through someone, right? That's a process called intercession. Yeah. Right. So, in the same sense that Shia Islam has the idea of uh, intercession, um, I can't remember via who, right? But they believe that I think it's Ali and Claudia can in intercede for them, right? Um, that's going through someone. But, but I don't have against, no, no, no. nothing against no Shia. No, no, of course, of course. They're, they're Muslim, they believe in one God. For example, you, you said that we have to go through Jesus, right? Uh, to get to God. They don't have to go through uh, Ali to get to God. Okay, they're, ask they're, them, ask any Shia that, cool. okay, right. that they don't have an intercession like how we uh, Christians have Jesus, but, for instance. No, no, but Jesus is not an intercessor. You're, you're making a mistake there. By saying that to get to God, but we he have died to, for your sins. Wait, to say that we have to be a way to get to God is through Jesus. Is to imply that Jesus is not God, which goes against the core belief of Christianity. If you have to go through something, if you have to go through X to get to Y, then X and Y are different. But if you believe that X and Y, X and X are the same, you cannot say you have to get through X to get to X. Because by getting through X, you have already got into X. You see what I'm saying? By the time you get to Jesus, you've already got to God. Basically. Exactly. Getting to Jesus is the same as getting to God and vice versa. Why is Jesus in the equation? Why is Jesus in the equation? Yeah. Because like he is I, God. When I'm asking God for something, yeah. like I, for example, I've got an illness. Yeah. Maybe I've got a cold or a flu. Yeah. Yeah. When I ask God, you ain't gonna, you as my you as my friend, you're not gonna make me you're not gonna make me better for my food. So who am I gonna ask? Gonna ask God. Allah, whoever you say is God. I'm gonna ask God. God, can you help me? I've got a flu. Please, can you get me through it? But I don't have to get. I don't have to take Muhammad. Uh, peace be upon you, Jesus. Peace be upon you. Or oh, anyone, can you uh, get me to God for me to, for whatever it is? Yeah. I could go direct, you know why? Yeah. That's the difference between the Muslim and the non-Muslim right. or Christian. But well, you do realize that by no. praying to God, we are praying to Jesus. They're not praying to two separate individuals. There, there's no sense of two gods or three gods in that, the idea That's of a deeper conversation that we could go to yeah. where, you, where you believe in the Father and the Holy Spirit yeah. and so forth. Yeah. But we're just talking about the general thing. No, but it's a general it's thing. A, it's a conversation when you're, when that you're is necessitated to the Lord, by the comments you just made. No, but when you're talking to the Lord, yeah. when you're talking to the Lord why should you have to go to someone else? As you're a human being, you've been put on this earth just like any other human being. I agree, you shouldn't have to you're go through anyone. I agree. As, as, as much as we respect Jesus, as much as we believe in my hand and peace your bones and all of the prophets that came, we don't have to. Have you not asked yourself, why do we have to go through another human being? To get through God. You, or are you saying that a human being is more than a human being? We're saying that's, that's, that's what we're saying. We, we, we don't go through the human being to get to God. The human being is not just a human being. The human being is God and human, human being God at the same time. That particular human being not praying to a human being. God at that time and place had come into the form of a human being. God and that person had attained to the time when they came to one. This is a body. Right? I'm a human being, right? But I I am not this body, right? What's inside me, my spirit, my rule, that is me. That is all one. It's all one. What do you mean? Human being and God is all one. No, I'm saying God in terms of the spirit, God, right? He can take whichever form he wants. Even Muslims believe that God talked to Moses through a burning bush. Right. Right? No, but listen. If God can talk via a burning bush, no, no, no. why is it a stretch of imagination and belief to believe that he can talk Let me tell you one thing. Me and you, and you and you, we're, we're human beings landed on this planet. Yeah. 
there were a certain amount of people, Muslims believe, I thought around 125,000 prophets landed on this planet, right? So they're prophets that Allah sent the message to, to send the message to. We're not one of them. So we don't equivalent ourselves to those people because they were prophets, they were important people right. they were mentioned in the books in the holy scriptures that Muslims believe in the old testament the torah we believe in some of it yeah whatever the true true part of it is we believe in that where we don't where we have an issue is that 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 the, our christian brothers who we love yeah who we love they believe that there is someone in between god there shouldn't be that because look Every human being that landed on this planet is a human being. They might have had powers if they were prophets. They might have had certain, you know, benefits, yeah? But they're not like us. We're, we are separate, yeah? We are there. They are there to set an example for us to follow. They're giving us a message to believe in one God. Simple as. Where is the issue? Where is, where, where is the wrong? Where is the problem? There is no difference between a Muslim and Christian. It's only that the Christian believes that Jesus is the son of God. But God doesn't need a son. No, but like God does not need a son, my brother. To previously, there are, there are more different things. Not just the nature of Jesus, but the historical everything events else, concerning his life. Everything else we can talk about, but right. this one is like a major difference. It's a major difference. Where you're saying that Jesus, God does not have a son, a partner, a mother, a father, a son, a daughter, can I a father-in-law. Right. God does not have that. God does not need that. Can I put forward to you a proposal? Right? What we're talking about is the nature of Jesus, right? No, 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 it's good. Okay, okay. This is probably more knowledgeable than me. What, what, what I'm saying is that just wait, wait, what we're talking about is the nature of Jesus. It's something philosophical, right? Unfortunately, unfortunately, it's not something that either side will be able to prove using hardcore stone cold facts. It's something that is to be debated and discussed. Right? If it wasn't if it was something that was factual, if it was something that was saying you just choose you wearing a black, people would not be coming to speak this corner every Sunday for Lord knows how many years talking about. Okay. It's something to be debated. Okay. So therefore, if we can go to something more debatable, something more fact based in uh, factuality, such as the historical events concerning Jesus' life, and we see a point of divergence between two beliefs concerning that matter, if we can find out which um, which ideology has the okay. correct belief I know what you're saying. Historical evidence, I know what you're we can saying. therefore conclude the first that that question, ideology has the facts about the nature of said person. Right, the first question I'm going to ask you is what you know about Jesus' life, mm. where is the fact behind that? I just want to know where you get your facts with the S at the end. Where do you get your facts from? Mm -hmm. With respect. Sure. Where do you get your facts from about Jesus' life? Where do you get your facts from about Jesus' life? Where do I get my facts from Where do you get, your facts, you get your, facts your facts from? Your facts. Okay, so in terms of my facts and what I believe are facts about Jesus' life, First of all, I read the Bible. Oh, Steve, which Bible do you know? No, no, no. We had this conversation before. It's a double standard. I'll ask you the same question. However, one thing that one thing that all the Bibles are consistent on, for example, is the death of Jesus. You can argue all you want about the circumstances under which he died, the conditions under which he died. But the one thing that they all consistent on is the fact that he died. Now. We can now look at historical evidence, unbiased historical evidence in the, in the form of historical writers about whether or not Jesus did actually die. And when we evaluate such sources, we use a few criteria. We use the place the source was written at, the time it was written at, and the, the person it was written by. The person. The person. The person. Now, I would argue that person, as I assume you also would, would think, person is probably the most important out of these two. It is the, if we can prove that this person was not only writing from a um, factual basis, but also from an unbiased basis, then we would have reasonable evidence to conclude that he is telling the truth. Is that correct? To some respect, yeah. To some respect. Could you explain why not to a full What I'm saying is, you have to not only have one person to have a, to have a witness of what happened, but maybe more than one person of course. would make it satisfactory, sure. if not agreeable. Sure. Am I right or wrong there? That's cool. That's what I'm so saying. So what I'm going to put to you yeah, is the question of, um, I studied A-level history, for example, right? right? And when we studied a historical event, we, for example, I had a source-based exam, right? And the exam was a question, and then there were four sources that I then had to evaluate in terms of reliability. And one of the things I learned is that if you're evaluating an event such as a battle, where there are two sides with differing points of view, that you can't actually trust either of those sides as a form what of unbiased. One side against one side. Well, if one side 
because there's an event that's taking place and there's one side against one side. Then you, you can't cannot equal. trust. It's equal. No, no, listen. You cannot trust either side's account of the event as historical, unbiased evidence. You can't. You can class it as Only historical. No, 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 no. You can class it as historical, but you can't class it as a fact. Because it's one side against one side. Because it's biased. People, it's biased. It's biased. But, but you, know, you don't know. You don't know. Someone who's neutral as an observer. What do you know that it's no a fact to either either side. Side. What do you know it's a fact to Right. No, 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 I'm getting to this point. Right. So, I can say, I read the Bible and it says Jesus died. And you guys can say, we can read the Quran and it says Jesus didn't die. But no, neither no. of those. Okay, let me tell you why. Because then the Quran. Alhamdulillah, it hasn't been changed. The Quran has not been touched. The Quran, what it was hundreds and hundreds of years ago, is what the Quran is now. But when was the Quran first written, bro? Have a look. I'm not as knowledgeable as other people around me. In the time of Muhammad. There you go. When was the, when was the Bible first written? No, 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 just wait. In terms of when the Quran was written, it's the first instance of which it was written hundreds and hundreds of years ago, as the brother said. Right? After the death of Jesus. Hundreds and hundreds right? of years ago. Oh, you mean the Quran was written after Jesus? I mean, it was actually written down after the death of Jesus. Sorry, the, what are you talking about? The Quran. The, 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 the Quran. The Quran. The Quran. Both, both were written. I mean, Muhammad. No, obviously, James both were written Muhammad. after his death. Yeah. I acknowledge yeah. that. Right. But this is why I'm saying that both that you cannot take either of them yeah. as unbiased factual pieces of evidence. Why not? You can't until you find a neutral source that will confirm one or the other. Why do you need a neutral source for the Quran? Tell me. Why, why do you need a neutral source for the Quran? Right. So let's say um, let's say there was a fight, yeah? There was a fight on Oxford Street. Yeah. There was two rival gangs. And then one man was watching it, yeah? And he was affiliated with one of the gangs watching it. Right? And he witnessed it and he went to a piece of bias. It is a bias. So therefore, to confirm what he said, yeah. you now need someone neutral. Where's your evidence that the man who spoke the evidence was part of a part of you part of gang or whatever you want to call it? Yeah? Where where's your evidence that, that person could be biased? Where's your evidence? I, I'm saying Are you saying that if you did not find a neutral person, you would accept that as being from God? Um, I would be less inclined to accept it. However, I would most likely be able to find reasons to accept it based on you, other facts. Are you talking about the scripture or you're talking about other historical aspects? Because I'm, they are not the same, you know. Because history can be something that can be manipulated, can be lied to, can be maybe exaggerated. But when you're talking about scriptures from God, are you going to basically see them in the same way? No, no, because, because they are from God, you therefore have to acknowledge that they are perfect, valuable, and therefore you take them as your prime source of evidence. I see what you're saying. However, you have to admit that historical sources would have to back up some of the claims made in the book. Yes, if, if there are you historical are, aspects... You're, you're the main, the main issue, the main, main, main key issue, right? Is that... A new model, upgrade. When we... Both books, right? When we're evaluating, we're evaluating the reliability of the Quran or the Bible. The, the main issue is we're all coming from the Bible. All of us. We're all coming from a Bible. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Some kind, right? And to be honest, you can pick out faults with every single piece of historical evidence in existence. You can pick out faults. There is no such thing as the perfect piece of historical evidence. And I'm referring to both the Bible and the Quran. I'm referring to in terms of being able to prove without a shadow of a doubt that it is the truth. Hence why Islam is called a faith, Christianity is called a faith. Because if they were, you know, die hard facts, then everyone would believe it. Everyone would believe it. I say your shoe is black, no one's going to disagree with it unless they're colorblind. Then it's a disability. No, there's, I think there's an element of faith and there's an element of facts as well. You cannot just say of course, it's okay. just faith only. No, I'm not saying okay. it's faith only. I'm but saying it's but you know the main thing, the main fact of normally a religion and a faith, it has a purpose of, in terms of what the message is and how the message is portrayed, both in terms of what the scripture says and what the doctrines of the faith say. You see what I mean? Now, when you compare the Quran to the doctrines within Islam, then they are perfect in the sense that we don't believe in certain things like the original sin. We believe that God is merciful and He's able to forgive. Yes. When we use we had this debate on just and mercy a while ago. Yeah, I know. You remember. But when we when we use the same methodology for the Bible, then we see that somehow the human sin is 
limiting the mercy of God. Limiting the mercy of God. You see what I mean? Which you do not see in Islam, there is such a thing as forgiveness. In Christianity, there is no such thing as forgiveness. So if you remember from our previous discussion, that the only way for you to be forgiven is the shedding of blood. Yes, Hebrews 9.22, there is no forgiveness without the shedding of blood. You see what I mean? But that comes with the quality of being a just God. No, but that's a payment. Forgiveness, no, no. See, the issue here is, unfortunately, for myself, I do actually see what you're saying. Yeah. That's the however, issue. what's the issue? However, however, the issue is this. If there is no punishment, if there is no punishment, then there is no justice. No, no, I'm not talking about punishment. I'm forgiveness about, I'm, I'm punishment. I've heard of this comment before. I'm not talking yeah. about punishment. I'm talking about forgiveness versus payment. Mm -hmm. In Christianity, it's payment by blood. Yeah. In Islam, it's forgiveness that's without... It. Expecting anything right. else in return, other than for the asking, no, seeking no, forgiveness. Can I be honest with you? I, I believe that this is where it now boils down to opinion. No, it's not. No, this is, this is your you, doctrine, my friend. Hear me out. 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 This is where it boils down to opinion in the sense of which system is more fair. You have a system on the left which says forgiveness is available, but punishment had to be put in place as any any kind of sin must have a punishment associated with it for a god to be just You're and, no no no, no that's our system and then i the, never use the word punishment remember and then the system on the right says that punishment is not necessary when a sin has been committed forgiveness can be given without any kind of punishment that is one option i'm not saying that is the only the option, option. So, there, are, there are three options so wait so god forgiving you is an option without expecting anything in return this option christianity doesn't have for you, the only option there is either payment by blood, and if you don't accept that punishment, yeah. you see what I mean? In Islam, we have the option of forgiveness, we have the option of uh, basically uh, uh, punishment as well. So you see, we have both. It's not just forgiveness. No one, no one in Islam says, oh, for everything you'll just be forgiven. But you just said that in Islam, for example. We have both you, options. you also have the option of punishment. Yes. Right, so why do you have a problem with punishment? Is applied in Christianity. Oh, no, no, you're missing. No, no. Punishment is not payment. You then see why what I mean? Is it look, look. For you, the only option is payment yeah. and or punishment. Yeah, yeah. For us, it's forgiveness as well. Yeah. And we don't have payment. God doesn't demand payment yeah. by blood. Yeah. This is something which is not in Islam. But what I'm saying is, we can have that debate. Well, and we will have that debate by looks. Um, we had a debate. Yeah, we did have a debate. <laughs> we had a debate on the sin as well. But, um, because you, look, but sin, the real point is, for you, sin is something that needs to be paid by blood. I believe if someone commits a crime, then a punishment must be exacted for that crime. For that crime, right? Are you saying that it is only punishment? Will you ever forgive any crime? Will I ever forgive yes. any crime? Even the judge, forget you, even the judge in this country, you know many of the first time offenders, are, and I don't mean by major offenses. We really apply this concept to humans. My friend, we are applying this in the crowd comes by the way. Every day in the courts they apply this. The concept of forgiveness is human. If a crowd comes around, I'm not going to be talking. Because me and this brother were just having a little conversation. I'm Bro, you had a camera there, come on. It was between two people. I know, but the camera is not just two people, you know that. It goes on YouTube. If you're shy about the audience don't be here, shy, brother. Don't be then shy. it should no, be on the real what, talk, what, my brother. It's a real talk. Real talk. I didn't really come into the debate. It's not about that. It's about us learning. We're all learning. We're all learning. And to be honest, call it a conversation. Call it a conversation. I don't mind. It's a real That's it. Please. I am, bro. Well, I'm I'm I'll tell you what. No, but it's almost I'll, Muslim, I'll tell you yeah. what. I'll, I'll call it a dialogue. Is that good enough for you? Dialogue is what it is, yeah. Because you see, look, at the end of the day, we will be answerable to God. Yes? If we are going to discuss the scriptures, we should be sincere with ourselves first That's it. and then with, with our fellow humans. Mm -hmm. If something makes sense to you from your scripture, yes, then you accept it. I'm not telling you not to. But I'm also telling you that you have to question it. Even I as a Muslim, we question our, our, our sources. We do. That's the reason that our ulama, our scholars, they have deciphered the, uh, the hadith into something called the authentic, the sahih, and also the bawdu, the, the fabricated ones. Right. So we do question these things. But this is Would you ever question the Quran? I do, yes. Why not? Because the Quran is something, Quran itself tells you that if this book is from anyone other than Allah, surely you'll find contradictions in it. Falsification. Human beings, is you know human any, beings, many of them. Is there any proof that Allah wrote the Quran? Allah didn't write the Quran. Allah revealed the Quran. Revealed. So who wrote it? Who wrote the Bible? Well, answer, answer, answer the first. Be fair, be fair. Yeah, I am, I'm, but I answered two questions. Answer it's only fair to answer mine. I'm it's not here to debate you. I'm here to, because uh, you are, you seem quite confident in what you're speaking and what you're saying. So, 
for what you're saying, maybe it will be knowledge for me. I'm not here to right. tell you that uh, Islam is this, Islam yeah. is I'm that. Not, I'm not expecting I'm just All I'm here saying to is that you. if you have the right to ask me questions, it's only fair that I ask you as well a question. Is but I may not even have a religion. What made you think I'm a Christian? No, no. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> you know, people do assume because of the way you ask the questions. Okay, many, I get the same question from many Christians. So I assumed, and if I was mistaken, I apologize for that. That's all right. Okay? That's all right. But I would like to ask you why you don't have a religion. That's the next question, maybe. <laughs> because I wish not to have a religion. That's my choice. Okay. That's my choice. That doesn't make me a bad or a good person. No, no one is judging you or no your character. No one judge it. No one say it. No one However, say it. when you say you, you don't have a religion, haven't answered my question. Yeah, which is Allah revealed the Quran. No, what, what's your question? What's your question? What's your question? Who, what is the question? Who wrote? So if Allah oh, who wrote the Quran? It, who wrote it? Okay, so Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, the Prophet of Islam, his companions wrote it, and then the other people wrote who were their companions, who were their companions, and then the Muslims today are writing. And and by the way, the Quran is not only revealed by writing in in written form. The the primary source, the way the Quran was propagated, was oral, and this tradition is still alive to this day. So most of the, if you go to many of the masajids here, many of the mosques, yes. They have children as young as five and six years old who memorize the Quran from cover to cover. So the way we actually uh, propagate the Quran, the main source, has always been the oral form, which I said is alive today. So it's like imagine your children learning the times table. Yeah. So if they want to solve some equation or some uh, calculation, maybe buying something in the shop, how easy it is for them to calculate the total amount if they know the times table by heart. But imagine if they have to look up a written times table all the time. It'll so, slow down the process, isn't it? So we have one of the best ways of propagating, yeah, and whispers. that is by memory. And it is definitely not Chinese whispers. Not Chinese <laughs> because, whispers, brother. Because Chinese, you know the difference. The uh, no, no, you know no, the no, difference no, no, between no. Chinese whispers is you're only talking Chinese. about one line of uh, information flow. Chinese whispers is that is basically one person to one person, one person. In the way the tradition of Islam is, like unless and until you are a scholar of the Quran, you have memorized the Quran yourself, you cannot give permission to somebody else that they become your student to, for, for memorization. So it's actually a controlled scholarly institute to basically become a hafiz. So it's, it's, it's not Chinese whispers. Unqualified, Chinese unqualified, Chinese unqualified people. But, but anyway, that's but, his opinion. But it's only for Islam, but then other religions will feel the same about their own. You feel that because you've studied that, the Quran, because you're following that religion, yes, that's for you. That's what you feel that way. But for other people, we feel, say for example, I feel my religion is say Catholic or Judaism or Hinduism or Sikhism. They have their own beliefs and they are true and they stand their own. It's a good question. But we wouldn't go and say that this is the best religion, this is the right religion, this is the religion that everyone should follow. Okay. Now, Unlike the way you're yeah. coming across, yeah. that the way you're saying is, no, you should be doing this, you should be doing that, yeah. you should be doing that. Actually, I didn't tell Whereas, anyone to do anything. No, I explained, you, are, you asked me a question way, about my faith, no, no. I explained to you but, about my but faith. But the way you're saying, if you And by the way, you assumed I haven't studied the other religions. I never said you have studied No, other you religion. said your religion, you feel might be true, but yeah. then the other religions explain that. Yeah. The thing is, I have studied the other religions. Okay. And that's how I came to the conclusion that the Bible is not true and the Quran is true. See, I am sorry, but I completely disagree so, so with you. Why? Why? Have you, have you studied the Bible? Bible, I believe in the Bible, I believe in all religions, but I'm not going to say one religion is higher than no, but, the but other. No, but have you studied the Bible? Have you studied it? Yes, I have read the Bible. Okay, so in the Bible... I'm, listen, listen, no, no, wait, wait. listen, I'm going to stop you there. I'm going to stop you there. You, you okay? seem to get agitated, I don't no, know why. No, 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 when I asked you, have you studied the Bible, so you're going to agitate? No, I'm not getting why? agitated at all. What I'm here to say is I'm not here to say that the Bible is better or the, I don't know, the Bhagavad Gita is better. What I'm here to say is I don't think you should stand here preaching about the Quran being the highest. Why not? No, because all religions are equal. So who told I'm, you that? What I'm telling no, no, who you, told you that? They are all I am equal. telling you. Have you studied all religions? I am telling Have you, you that they are equal. No, no. What? So if you haven't studied all religions, how can what? you say they're equal? No. Now ima imagine, I'm sorry. Wait, I'm imagine sorry. if somebody sorry. says to me, no, that's why. Fine. Because this is coming from emotion. Away. Away. At the end of the day, this is from emotion. No, if away. anyone says that all religions are equal, no, no. then they surely haven't re read all the religions. Can't take, the it's reason is that the truth. individual, isn't it? So if you're saying you studied all religions, then you decided. No, I didn't say I've studied all religions. Well, I'm, did, saying, I'm saying somebody who makes a judgment that all religions are equal, then they haven't re studied all religions. I can tell that factually. The so reason for that is they're not equal. No, they're not because of the few religions that I've studied, 
they themselves are not equal, let alone all the religions in the world. For, exa what, what? For, for example, there are many religions which believe that God became a man. Yes, my religion and Jewish religion, Judaism, they do not believe that God became a man. Yes, I'm talking about Judaism, not some Messianic Jews. 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 I'm talking about Judaism as a religion. So they are okay. Some Jews. Yes, some, some. Those are not Jews. Those are Messianic Jews who are Christians actually. So that is the faith. The faith. When they profess the faith, the Messianic Christians, they say we are Christians. They believe in Christ as the Savior, and they believe that Christ is the Messiah. But Judaism, look, look at this. Actually, Isa is a very good point. Jesus is one of the key points which I can tell you that all the religions are not the same. Because.